the committee will come to order. The Information Policy, Census, and National Archives Subcommittee of the Oversight and Government Reform Committee will come to order. Good evening and welcome to tonight's hearing entitled the 2010 Census Communication Contract. The media plan in hard to count areas. Today's hearing, as the title indicates, will examine the 2010 Census Integrated Communications Campaign in hard to count areas. The hearing will assess and examine ethnic print and broadcast media's role in preventing an undercount. We will further examine avenues to aid the Census Bureau in its efforts to reach those who are more likely to be undercounted, children, minorities, and renters. Uh, we have with us today a distinguished colleague, um, who represented Maxine Waters of California, who has asked to participate in this hearing. I want to welcome her and express my appreciation for her attendance. And I ask un unanimous consent that she be allowed to participate. Thank you. Without objection, the chairman and ranking minority member will have five minutes to make opening statements, followed by opening statements not to exceed three minutes by any other member who wishes to make one. Without objection, members and witnesses may have five legislative days to submit a written statement or extraneous materials for the record. The purpose of today's hearing is to examine the Census Communications Campaign in hard to count areas. An unprecedented amount of federal dollars has been expended towards the constitutionally mandated exercise of counting our nation's population. We have the funding necessary to carry out this endeavor. However, we must assess and ensure the best placement and use of our taxpayer dollars. Uh, let me state again, these are taxpayer dollars. We cannot forget that. So we must, through our oversight, ensure that the taxpayer receives their money's worth uh, advertising dollars must be contributed to specific mediums to best touch our nation's hardest to count populations. I salute Dr. Groves for his efforts and hope this hearing brings forth great ideas and input from all who care so deeply about this issue. Uh, on our first panel, we will hear from Dr. Groves and the Census government contractors who will testify about the census campaign, including the media strategy, development, and placement of advertising dollars. Our second panel includes leaders of some of the largest civic and professional organizations dedicated to minority participation, education, and equality. These witnesses have been instrumental in spreading the message of census and will testify regarding the experiences and concerns. This panel is acutely aware of the challenges of enumerating the hard to count populations. Our last panel consists of not only media experts in ethnic broadcasting, but also those whose endeavors focus on our most hard to count population, our nation's children. Uh, these witnesses serve as the active, trusted voices in many of the hard to count communities. Uh, this panel will offer recommendations they believe will improve the effectiveness of the media campaign going forward. Uh, census Day is a, is a mere five weeks away, so let's work together and exchange ideas to ensure an accurate count. And I thank all of the witnesses for appearing uh, and look forward to your testimonies. I now yield uh, to the distinguished ranking member.
uh, five thank, minutes. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I, I thank you all for being here this late and unpredictable hour, and I appreciate your patience and, and understanding. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I ask you now as consent to submit the statement of Ranking Member Patrick Henry, who is unavoidably detained uh, and could not be here. I'd like to submit this for the record if we Without could. Without objection. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I do want to talk about the, uh, the details uh, of what's happening and not happening uh, within the uh, advertising. You know, this comes around once every 10 years, and I recognize the short amount of time that we have until the execution of this, and we need the maximum participation from the American people. Uh, we want to encourage everybody to, uh, to participate in every way, shape, or form, recognize the difficulties in trying to get to hard to, to reach and hard to count uh, populations. And obviously, uh, on both sides of the aisle, we want to make sure that everyone is counted. Uh, it's a very difficult task, to say the least. Uh, but as the chairman said, we're using taxpayer dollars, and we want to make sure that those are being maximized and that we're getting the, the maximum uh, results that, that we possibly can. Uh, I, for one, am terribly disappointed in the census in their inability uh, and unwillingness to cooperate in giving us details that we have asked for repeatedly. And I hold Director Groves personally accountable for his unresponsiveness in a repeated nature. I think it's terribly uh, disrespectful and unacceptable. When I have asked repeatedly for information, you have repeatedly refused to give it to us. I am a member of the United States Congress. You have a duty and an obligation to perform your duties and provide this Congress and this committee details that we ask for. Sir, I find your actions reprehensible. I will continue to grill you as long as it takes and the organization to provide the information that I think the American people should have. And I hope that at some point there's some sort of attitude adjustment in providing the information that I think the American people should have. I don't think we can continue on like this. It's a late hour, the Olympics on, there's a lot happening. I will promise you that we will continue to pursue this information well into the future and would hope at some point that you would give us a genuine answer and provide genuine information as you promised in the last hearing that I was in with you because I think the information and the promises that you gave me personally in this committee were not followed up. That's my personal perspective. You may have a different one. I respect that. But I assure you, we will continue at this until we get the information that we ask for. Further, uh, I really do believe that we need to look at the results of the advertising campaign and the direction that it's going. Um, I hope you understand and respect that we're not here to just pat you on the back, that we're here to ask difficult questions. And I have some serious questions about what we're doing and not doing in that regard. And then following up long term, I do have questions about the uh, American Community Survey the questions that are asked, how that's uh, executed, the money that we spent on. We won't have time in this hearing, but I would like to follow up with the, the appropriate panel members, Mr. Chairman, as we move forward on that in the future. I'll yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. Uh, no, no, no. We, we, will, we will maintain order and decorum in this hearing. And Mr. Chaffetz, we will maintain a tone here that's civil. Fair enough. I now recognize a gentlewoman from California if she has an opening statement. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm a pre very appreciative for your allowing me to participate uh, in this hearing today. I know that you have been working very, very hard, and you have been keeping us informed, many of us, uh, informed about what is going on uh, with the Census uh, Bureau and the uh, census count that is being attempted, uh, but I'm increasingly concerned about uh, much of the information that I'm getting. Uh, some of that, that it's come from um, the black newspapers, uh, black radio stations, uh, some of the information that have come from uh, minority organizations, period. Uh, it appears that our message of the undercount uh, is not being respected. Uh, the fact of the matter is, every 10 years, uh, we learn about the undercount. And you would think that uh, the undercount communities would be targeted uh, with the necessary resources to reverse that uh, and to get a better count. But uh, it does not appear to be happening. And I'm concerned about the way that conclusions are reached about how to reach uh, minority populations. There's a lot of speculation uh, about what is and what is not proper and appropriate and effective in reaching minority uh, populations. I have not heard any information about how these conclusions were
were reached, whether or not there were the kind of focus groups that represented these populations. Uh, I have not seen the research. I have not seen the data uh, that supposedly represents uh, these communities. And the money does not appear to match the need. And so I'm here today uh, to learn what's going on. I think we may have some additional work to do. And thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you so, so much, Ms. Water. And perhaps uh, we will get some of the answers to your questions this evening. Uh, and, and, and you raise legitimate concerns. And, and we certainly want to have yours and Representative Chaffetz questions answer. Um, so let's, let's start by introducing the panel. Um, let me first, we, we will hear first uh, from Dr. Robert Groves. President Obama nominated Dr. Groves for director of the Census Bureau, uh, and Dr. Groves began his tenure in, on July 15, 2009. And uh, uh, Dr. Groves, uh, is well qualified for the position that he holds as director of the census. Um, a testimony on this panel will also come from draft FCB, uh, Mr. Jerry Tarkasian and, and subcontractors Global Hue and Global Hue Latino, represented by Ms. Robin Ennis and Mr. Nelson Garcia. Uh, Jeff Tarkasian is Executive VP of Draft FCB, the draft, the prime contractor of the 2010 Census Integrated Communications Campaign. Ms. Robin Ennis is a media director at Global Hue, a black-owned, full-service advertising agency. Ms. Ennis is an experienced advertising professional with 12-plus years of media planning and buying experience. Ms. Ennis manages overall media planning and buying operations of Global Hue. Mr. Nelson Garcia is the Senior VP Media Director at Global Hue Latino. Mr. Garcia is a 30-year advertising industry veteran. Mr. Garcia has held multicultural media, manage, media management positions at, at top mainstream and leading specialty multicultural advertising agent, agency. Uh, thank you all for appearing before the subcommittee this evening. Uh, it is the policy of the committee to swear in the panel. Let me ask you to, rise, to please stand and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Let the record reflect that the witnesses have answered in the affirmative. And each of you will have five minutes to make an opening statement. Your complete written testimony will be introduced, will be included in the hear, hearing record. And of course, you know the lighting system in front of you. Uh, Dr. Groves, you may proceed with your opening statement. Chairman Clay, Ranking Member Chaffetz, uh, other members of the subcommittee, I'm happy to be here to uh, testify on the 2010 Census Communications Campaign. I personally am confident that the, the campaign is a sound design, the messaging is clear, and that our contractors, with the guidance of my colleagues at the Census Bureau, are purchasing media that will reach hard-to-count populations and motivate them to respond to the census. Consistent with the statistical mission of the Census Bureau, the campaign was designed based on statistical data. Let me tell you a bit about how we did this. Uh, the staff first assembled rates of response to the 2000 census, way down at the census track level, and also undercount estimates for key sociodemographic groups. Low Groups with low participation rates were identified for disproportionate focus. Then the contractor identified media outlets that reached those different groups, focusing uh, when appropriate on in-language media. It was clear from this that more funds should be spent locally than nationally, and that is true in contrast to the 2000 media buys. Then the media buys were directed by the nature of the need for a given audience. By that we mean whether uh, uh, print media were, were chosen, radio media, TV, or, or digital media. 
The campaign is designed in three phases. There's an awareness phase that is going on right now through mid-March. The second is a motivation phase that uh, runs mid-March through mid-April. And then the third is a non-response follow-up stage that's designed to assure or to encourage the, the population to cooperate with census takers who visit their homes to follow up uh, those households that did not send in their census form. The mass advertising part of this campaign will target the English speaking audiences and additional, additional specific advertising will be geared towards a range of diverse audiences including hard to count populations. The mass campaign is designed to reach the almost 85% of the residents who consume paid media and who speak English only. However, it's also going to reach other ethnic and language audiences, especially the black audience, to the extent that they are consumers of those same media outlets and diverse mass. Each of the targeted audience plans, black, Hispanic, Asian, etc., has been designed to penetrate the individual markets sufficiently to achieve our campaign goals. The research behind the campaign focused on understanding the societal factors that help contribute to low response rates in the 2000 series. Among the key indicators are the rates of public assistance in the area, unemployment rates, home ownership versus renting, and linguistic isolation. This research, along with commercial market research uh, from Arbitron, Nielsen, and Simmons, gave us the ingredients to guide the media buys. Then our contractors ended in, entered into negotiations for the media buys for national and local outlets. They followed industry pa uh, practices, which seek added value from the outlets beyond the price of the placements sought by an advertiser. An example of this is uh, that the, uh, for the 2010 campaign is additional broadcast spots provided for free, celebrity endorsements or mentions of the census in programming or through public service announcements. As of late January, the census team had negotiated almost $30 million in added value from media outlets. When all is said and done, we expect that to, be, to represent about 25% uh, when finalized after non-response follow-up. I've focused on the media plan. However, I, I, I think it important to understand that this is only one component of our outreach and promotion strategy. Advertising can increase in awareness, but it takes trusted voices to persuade people to participate in the census. I'm happy to report that we have now over 200,000 partner organizations around the country that have volunteered to help us get the word out to their constituencies. And I know, uh, with the help of this committee and other members of, of Congress, uh, that we'll get other voices out saying the same message. Mr. Chairman, I'm aware that some members of Congress have received letters from local media outlets in their districts questioning the fairness of the amount of money spent. I can honestly say that the program was set up in an objective manner, guided by data on what audiences needed, given their historical behavior. Not all media outlets will receive contracts, but I'm confident that the messages needed for the different audiences are being delivered. We acknowledge that no plan is perfect, uh, and we've held back money over uh, uh, of the total amount to react to response rates as they emerge in the last weeks of March and the early weeks of April. That held back money will be targeted through new media purchases to the areas that are, that are returning the questionnaire at lower than ex expected rates. Thank you for your time today, Mr. Chairman. I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Dr. Groves. Mr. Tarkasian, you, you may proceed with your opening statement. Mr. Chairman, members of the subcommittee, um, the entire Team Census 2010 thanks you for the opportunity to be here today and talk to you about the Integrated Communications Campaign. Today's topic the 2010 communications contract, the media plan to hard to count areas, uh, is what is our focus. Excuse me, would you move the mic a little closer to sure. you, please? Thank you. Uh, is our focus for today. 
Uh, joining me are members of the team who are experts on the planning and execution of the media effort for key multicultural audiences, including hard to count areas. Um, Julia Chen from the IW Group is here, uh, along with Bhavna Smith from Draft FCB. As I've stated in previous testimony, the communication strategies and the budget allocation decisions that we've made have consistently placed greater emphasis on reaching and motivating hard to count audiences. The budget allocations are disproportionately greater to hard to count audiences relative to their population size and more emphasis is being placed on hard to count audiences than in the 2000 census. By way of example, 53% of the dollars will go toward what we call in-culture, in-language advertising as compared with 46% in 2000. The campaign this time will exist in 11 more languages. That's 28 languages versus 17 in 2000. And with a more diverse population than ever, the campaign has been very careful to ensure that as many linguistically isolated populations as possible are covered with in-language communications. Each multicultural audience segment that had advertising in 2000 will have a minimum increase of 35% in spending in 2010 over the 2000 levels. And importantly, the campaign reaches out to hard to count audiences beyond multicultural populations. For example, there is a sponsorship with NASCAR and advertising in NASCAR programming that reaches the important rural audience, uh, a large portion of which is hard to count. There will be $6 million spent in online advertising that is targeted to single unattached mobiles, an audience identified by the Census Bureau as hard to count. The campaign also is more locally driven in 2000 than it was in, in 2010 than it was in 2000, with 47% of the dollars spent on local media versus 34% in 2000. In addition, the national media buys are seen in all local markets through local broadcast affiliates and national print vehicles that are distributed locally. So that means that every market will receive at least 25,000 television ads and over 6,000 radio ads. And many markets will receive much more as a result of the incremental, uh, incremental emphasis placed on hard to count audiences locally. An unprecedented outreach has been completed to make accessible the opportunity for all media properties to participate in the 2010 media buy. Over 2,500 RFPs have been issued that cover 61,000 media outlets. We don't know of a campaign that has made this kind of outreach uh, in, in the history of our business. Yet we know that media have complained that they didn't get business and we regret that this has happened. Um, media buys today have now been completed for the awareness and motivation phases of the campaign. Still to be purchased are media for non-response follow-up and as Dr. Grode says, for the deployment of rapid response reserve funds. So there is at this point some flexibility remaining uh, to address uh, unforeseen events, to fill gaps uh, that stakeholders believe need to be filled, and to make any adjustments based upon tra uh, campaign tracking results. So far, those results, uh, as of the middle of February, uh, show that awareness of census advertising is already at 72 percent, and that compares very favorably with 27 percent, uh, which was the number before ads began. Uh, the number is 77 percent for English-speaking blacks and 70 percent for English-speaking Hispanics compared to the overall number of 72. And intent to participate uh, is also strong at 87 percent overall, 88 percent for blacks and 85 percent for Hispanics. And this number continues to increase uh, as we look at the numbers going forward. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Dark Agent. Uh, Mr. Garcia, you may proceed. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and the committee for inviting me. Would you please pull your mic closer? Okay. Make sure it's Thank on. You. Okay. It's, it's on. Okay, you yeah. got it. Thank you. As with all the other ethnic and racial segments, the goal of the Hispanic audience plan was as follow to improve male response, to improve overall accuracy, to reduce the differential undercount, and to improve cooperation with enumerators. 
To meet all these goals required more than just hardworking media dollars in relevant environments. It required a fully integrated campaign and a coordination of multiple efforts by partner agencies that included paid media, partnership, public relations, census school, and earned media outreach. The goal of paid media was to educate all Hispanic Americans in all 50 states, regardless of their residency status, as to the benefits of civic participation and to drive mass participation through the most relevant and influential forms of communication. The plan used research from a wide variety of sources, qualitative and quantitative learning from focus groups, demographic, psychographic, and lifestyle learning taken from two census-sponsored research studies. The first was a base segmentation study of the Hispanic population, and the second was a mindset study in which Hispanics, as it pertains to their perceptions of the census. From the first study, we were able to segment the Hispanic population to eight distinct target clusters. From the second study, we were able to understand media and messaging needs. This research was based and complemented with extensive use of authoritative secondary sources, which range from industry studies to the ACS to information from census.gov. In the discovery process, it was determined that 42.5% of the Hispanic community fell into hard to count clusters known as ethnic enclave one and two and economically disadvantaged two. Another key founding found that 60% of the ethnic enclave clusters were Hispanic. Therefore, these three clusters media habits was further examined and led to our recommendation. So our recommendation was first based on knowing that almost half the marketplace was hard to count and their media habits. We use syndicated research sponsored by the census. These findings plus the census mail response rate guided our development of a hybrid plan, one that put a greater emphasis on local media. 60% of paid media investment will be spent on local radio, newspaper, out of home, and really hyper local media such as public transit, lunch trucks, uh, retail post bills, wire transfer, check cashers, uh, ethnic restaurant menus, and also prepaid calling cards. So there's a lot of media, which is media that are used by immigrant communities, Spanish dominant community, recently arrived communities. To reach the most recently arrived and linguistically isolated, the plan is weighed toward trusted in-language medium. We have 99 newspaper markets. We have 38 radio markets. We have 11 out-of-home markets and 18 local news markets. A special effort was made to be in media consumed by migrant workers and rural Hispanics. In fact, a special purchase was made uh, with the United Farm Workers Radio Network, one of the group's most influential and trusted news sources. 9% of all DMAs have paid census Spanish TV advertising PSAs from trusted personalities since 80% of Univision, Telemundo, Telefutura, and TV Azteca's programming is common to all markets. In 18 local markets, an extra layer of support came by way of paid purchases on local news and local programming. These markets we, uh, were selected based on the fact that they had critical mass, at least 100,000 people, the fact that they at least had 10 percent of the population was Hispanic, that their hard-to-count scores were above the national average, and that the mail return rate was below the national average. And we looked at an eight-year growth rate above the national average, and we also looked to hypergrowth markets in the specific West, the Midwest, the Southwest, and this resulted in a media plan that was very locally oriented. This is the most democratic uh, RFP process possible. Uh, we sent out RFPs to 1,053 individual media companies, which yielded close to 21,000 points of contact with the individual Hispanic media. We placed $25.4 million in media so far, and it yielded 7.5 million, million back in added value return, or 30% of our dollars were increased because of the generosity of our partners. And we involved America's top Hispanic talent, everyone from Maria Marin, Bioling, uh, Cristina, Don Francisco, all the key names, all the people that matter and influence this community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garcia, Ms. Ennis. You may be, re you're recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, members of Congress and Team Census 2010, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to talk about the 2010 Census Integrated Communication Campaign, specifically as it relates to the paid media and the black audience segment. The three key objectives for the Integrated Communications Campaign 
for the black audience are to increase male response, improve accuracy and reduce the differential undercount, and lastly, improve cooperation with enumerators. All of these goals were targeted to the black audience segment, which is inclusive of African Americans, Caribbean Americans, Haitian Americans, and black Africans. In order to assist in meeting these goals, an integrated paid media plan has been developed based on the media habits and behaviors of these particular audiences. During our media planning process, as well as buying, we utilize proprietary research. Thank you. I'm too close. Okay. Let's try and proprietary third party party research as well as proprietary res research, CBAMs and cluster data to develop media plans. Utilizing census and industry research, qualitative and quantitative data allowed us to develop the most efficient and effective media mix against the black audience segment and specifically the hard to count audiences within the segment. Part of unearthing the data included analysis of what clusters and categories the black audience represented or skewed heaviest. We found that one third of black households fell into economically disadvantaged one and two, and they comprised nearly half of the households in each of those two clusters, 44% and 48% respectively. The third hardest to count cluster was single unattached mobiles, which were 11% of blacks and 16% of blacks within that particular cluster. After reviewing the media consumption of these three clusters, special consideration was made to skew strategies and media efforts to those audiences, which are typically unlikely to respond. The CBAM's research was utilized to provide additional media strategy enhancement, particularly with our hard to count segments. One of the key takeaways from the research was that although there was somewhat of an awareness of the census, the belief that it will make a difference in our own communities is relatively no low. In this case, Global Hue's recommendation, which <coughs> crosses all segments, was to skew choices not only towards trusted targeted media, but to hone in on trusted voices that the audience is familiar with, believe, and that will create awareness and more willingness to participate. Some of the talent secured to reach hard to count audiences include but are not limited to R&B artist Monica, national syndicated radio host Steve Harvey, Michael Baisden, gospel artist Yolanda Adams, April Ryan, Marvin Sapp, Ludacris, Cece Winans, Rico DuPont, Joan Savory, Dikembe Mutombo, and Terrence and Roxy of 106 and Park. Research guided all media choices down to the tactical level of the specific media outlets that were used. What resulted was a plan that had a greater emphasis on local media. 55% of the total allocated budget went to local media. National media support provided the most efficient way to reach the black masses of black adults. Targeted efforts were also utilized in partners such as BET, TV One, Radio One, and AURN provided significant added value in the form of free PSAs, mentions, use of talent, media integrations, vignettes, and multiple no-charge spots. This coverage has been essential to the overall media plan. Utilizing local media is a key strategy of the black audience plan and is equally important as national media. We utilize the following information to prioritize local markets. Population size, historical response data, prevalence of hard to count households within the market, availability of media in each market, as well as local media studies, um, and regional director and advisory committee feedback. A matrix was created and markets were prioritized, which resulted in a total of 31 markets where we would focus our local dollars and efforts. We have since extended the market list based on the same criteria to support additional markets, now a total of 60 plus with targeted black media efforts. Over 500 RFPs were distributed representing 22,000 media properties. Two minority subcontractors were secured, Voices Inc. and NNPA to negotiate and place the local targeted media buys. Once RFPs were distributed, proposals were reviewed based on the specific criteria and media selections were made. Some criteria included a um, vehicle's effectiveness in reaching the target audience, reach of the media vehicle, content environments that are conducive to the census message, cost efficiency, minority ownership, and added value programs that would enhance the campaign's message. 
Overall, this plan was designed to effectively and efficiently reach the black audience segment and specifically deliver the heart to count. The messaging will reach 95% plus blacks covering every market in the country. Thank you so much for all of your testimony and we will um, digress from the normal uh, questioning uh, order and I will recognize Representative uh, Waters to start us off. Representative Waters, five minutes. Thank you very much. Um, there are a number of questions that um, I have, Mr. Chairman, but uh, first of all, let me ask, um, in dealing with uh, the black media, black newspapers and the references that you have made uh, to um, public service announcements and basically free uh, media. Has there been uh, some attempt to say to black newspapers, for example, that um, we will spend X amount of dollars with you based on how much free uh, space you give us? Uh, has there been a demand to say you've got to run X number of uh, of uh, um, items for us in order for you to get um, us to pay you for a certain amount of advertising. Did this or did this not happen? Ms. Ennis, you wanna uh, respond to that? Yep, I can definitely respond to that. Um, per the written recommendation of the NNPA. I'll have to ask the audience to um, to not interfere with the testimony or the questioning. Please, please observe. Please observe the decorum of the committee. Uh, if you if you are a witness, if you are a witness, you will have an opportunity to respond. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to start over. Go on, Ms. Ennis. Per the written recommendation of the NNPA. The papers were asked to volunteer to include or write any positive articles or editorial about the census 2010 as an added value submission. Any papers that did not want to take part in submitting or writing articles or submitting editorial were asked to provide another alternative of added value to our agency. Um, because of the importance of the census um, to each of our communities, we were told that would potentially be an easy ask. We have received other um, added value requests from the papers that did not agree to th that particular term and we're completely fine with that. Was and this asked of white papers? I'm sorry? Were white papers asked for this added value as an exchange for being getting paid advertisement? The added value is, an, is, not, an added, is not asked as an exchange for paid advertising. The paid well, was it asked of the white newspapers at all? The, it <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Please. Sure. You may in, answer. In, in, in she gave us a specific answer <coughs> to how this came about, asking mm -hmm. for free media. And I want to know what the connection is to paid media and how was it presented? And it was presented to black newspapers, wherever the recommendation came from. Right. Was it presented to any other newspapers, white newspapers, or just minority newspapers, or Latino, black, what have you? The, the, the request for added value is a, is a very standard way of operating. But I didn't ask about standard way, I asked what did you do? We present. I want to know what the census did, what the census project did. Of course, it may be a standard way of doing business, but I want to know what did census, Team Census 2010 do? Did you do this for all newspapers? For the census contract. Don't, don't, don't nuance it for me. You either did it or you didn't. Did you do it? For the census contract, we ask for additional added value for all the media buys that we make. It is not a condition of running media. Uh, it is, as I said. Was this done in writing? Or was this a verbal request? Uh, under, under oath, I, I can't tell you 100% what was done in writing and what was done verbally. Under oath, you probably can't tell me whether it was done at all. 
No, I can tell you that it was that the request for added value. Who did the request and how was it done? Ask one of your people with you. Somebody must know. When we do our media buys, and in specifically as it relates to newspapers, which is your question, we like, like um, uh, Ms. Ennis is talking about, work with a rep firm who would represent a variety of different newspapers. And many of the rep firms will then recommend uh, ideas for added value. Uh, again, those are ideas that they put on the table. Um, we seek them, we encourage them, but we do not make the requirement that somebody provide added value to literally qualify for a media okay, buy. Okay, we're, we're going to dispense with uh, this because I think you've just told me what I wanted to know. First of all, uh, your reps are the ones who are negotiating this added value, and you don't really know what they're saying. Uh, you don't have any way of knowing whether or not they're saying this is ex in exchange for a paid media. You would hope they're not doing that. But you don't know whether or not they're doing it because you are not doing it yourself. Your reps are doing it. Is that correct? Can, can I answer? Um, if it's all right if I answer sure. that question. When we, what happens is we work directly with our subcontractors and reps. So we approve all paperwork. Now, conversation. Oh, so this is in writing. You have this, this request in writing? This is in writing. The added value? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, may I the, ask the that Here. it be uh, submitted to, your, um, to you uh, so that we can examine exactly what was placed in writing? And, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, will you have them indicate who all was, uh, who all this request was made of? Was it made of only minority newspapers, all newspapers, minority radio stations, minority television stations, all radio stations, all television stations, all et cetera, okay? You have heard the request and I'm sure you will submit it to this committee as uh, with all due speed. Thank okay. you very much, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you and I recommend, I rec recommend I'll, I appreciate the recommendation too. Thank you. That's good. Uh, thank you all for your for your testimony. Uh, I do have a series of questions. Um, th let me understand the macro number. The overall advertising budget is. How, how, what is the number for the advertising budget for for paid media? Paid media. One hundred and thirty million dollars. Okay. Um, Diving into the specifics of how that is divvied up, my understanding, based on something I pulled off of the website, is that TV is roughly 52% of that budget. I'm looking at this document that I pulled off here, draft, uh, and then uh, it has these little pie charts, understanding of the, the types of media that was run. Right. As a general number, I'm not going to hold you real specific to the exact percentage. I appreciate you're wanting to be accurate, but roughly half is, is television, right? That's correct. Um, are you happy with what's happened on television? I mean, most of the articles that I saw panned what happened on the, the Super Bowl ad. Are you happy with the way that worked and the Olympic buy? My understanding is the Super Bowl spent $2.5 million buying that ad time. Olympics was $5.1 million. Does that sound accurate in terms of the dollars spent? Uh, it, it, the Super Bowl number of 2.5 million is accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have the Olympics number in front of me, but that sounds about it? that sounds about accurate. Are you happy with the ad? I mean, the we we are happy with the fact that we projected an audience that would come out of the Super Bowl ad, uh, the Super Bowl advertising participation. Uh, as I think you are aware, this was the most watched Super Bowl ever. Um, those estimates were exceeded. Um, we have now awareness of the advertising that is, that is, like I said in my testimony earlier, is extremely, is extremely high for where we are at this stage of the campaign. 
And it's not just awareness, but the favorability, the, the um, willingness to participate, intent to participate, is also very high. So we put the two things together, and our view is that awareness and a favorable attitude toward the census and high intent to participate means that we're setting ourselves up to achieve uh, how, how, a strong motivation uh, period. Uh, our time is limited, so I, I, need, I need to keep moving here. Who owns Draft uh, FCP? Uh, FCB, what, sorry. What company? Yeah, the, who, who is the ownership of the, the organization? The Interpublic Group of Companies. It's a what? The interpublic group of companies. Okay, we'll, we'll dive into that later. How do you do the actual media buying? That is, who is doing the media buying and what percentage are they taking off in terms to actually executing the media buy? Um, the, the specific media buy that you're talking about, I believe, which is for the diverse mass audience, mm -hmm. uh, was done by a company called Penn Good. Uh, who is a subcontractor that we brought on board, who is a small um, disadvantaged business uh, that did the buying uh, on our behalf. And what percentage did they take of the media buy? You make a million dollar media buy, what percentage do they take? Well, there actually is no, in this contract, there mm -hmm. is no pass through on media. So there is no percentage that uh, anybody- They just played a fat, flat fee? It's, there's, a, there's a labor fee connected with uh, all the media buys, but there is not a percentage. Based I guess on the media moving buy. forward in, in, in the essence of time and the, the lateness of the hour, I would appreciate understanding the details of that. Specifically, I'd like to understand uh, the online campaign. I mean, one of the more effective ways to communicate with the, the public is the online communication. My understanding from, again, what we were able to pull off the website is that roughly 7% of your budget was to be uh, allocated in terms by media type online. Well, in the in the, um, uh, in the mass uh, diverse mass portion of the media plan, uh, it's roughly 10 percent of it, or six million dollars, is being spent online. For some of the other audiences, and how's that going so far? Um, it's best of my knowledge, it's going very well so far. Well, my my understanding, looking at the numbers here, if you look at the number of uh, go to the Facebook, look how many followers they have. They're roughly 8,500. You go to YouTube, 64 uploads. Uh, most views per video is less than 8,000. Uh, on Twitter, you have about 2,400 followers. Now, these are some of the biggest, most mainstream you know, pieces of media that are out there in terms of online. Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter have pretty much become household names. All told, you're getting a few thousand type of hits and responses. How can you spend millions and have 2,400 people on Twitter? I mean, I don't spend anything, and I got eight, 9,000 people on Twitter, for goodness sake. What, how, how do you justify millions of dollars going out the door and so few people participating in, in, the, in the program with you? Well, first of, first of all, what you're talking about and what I'm talking about in terms of the online media buy are two different things. Um, the 10% the of the mass communications base plan online media buy are all of the, the paid media banner ads that uh, are part of this campaign. And those are, are, are separate and apart from what you're talking about, which are uh, seeding, uh, commercials online, uh, uh, social media, and, and so forth, which is a totally different piece of this. Mr. Chairman, I, I know my time's up. I, I, I do have other questions for other panelists. I know we, we're going to have to do a couple rounds here. I, I just, you know, it talks in the plan about the need to have a viral component and to be able to get this out there in, in mass. I, I see it as a complete and utter failure, but I would like to learn more information. Thank you, Mr. And, and would, uh, Mr. Chaffetz, would you have any requests for documentation? Yes. I, again, if there are more details about what you're trying to execute, how you're trying to execute, and where you think you're seeing success, it's a mystery to me. And I, I'm, I'm sincerely wanting to understand it. And so if you think my numbers are wrong or there's a big component that we're not seeing, share it with us, please, sooner rather than later. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. We'll follow up with that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cuellar, you're recognized for five minutes. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. I was doing some addition as my colleague was doing. Uh, first of all, Dr. Gross, uh, good seeing you again. Thank you very much for going down to Laredo and visiting the Colonias, you know, the hard to get, uh, hard to count places. So I do want to thank you very much. Uh, for the other folks, I want to ask you a little bit about the budget. Um, I have a um, contract budget that y'all had prepared back in March 26 of 09. 
Now I'm looking at a revised budget of February 04, uh, the 4th of February of 2010. Uh, the, I want to look at a couple of numbers. The total media buy uh, at that time, back in March of last year, was 145,000. Now it shows that it's been reduced down to 133 million. I'm sorry, this is all million. 145 million, now it's been reduced to 133 million dollars. Uh, when you look at the local buys, uh, at that time I believe you had $82 million, and now it's been reduced to $56 million. When you look at the Hispanic buys back at that time, you had um, $27 million plus for Hispanic buys. Now it's reduced down to $25.4 million. When you look at the African Americans, the black, uh, at that time you had... 24.5 million, now it's at 22.9, so you have another reduction. Uh, when you look at production, and this is part of the paid media total budget, media production went from production, uh, went, which includes talent, gentlemen, ladies, talent, mm -hmm. dubbing, and GPO, uh, I guess the government printed office, that one went up on production from 28 million dollars to 36.6 million so production went up when you look at production labor and other and other includes travel research and management research uh, which I'll, I'll talk about that uh, when you add all those up I get about 118 million dollars for production labor and other uh, and then total advertising is about 133 million dollars so you almost have the money that we're spending for advertising, it's almost what we're spending for production and cost and all that almost matches what we're spending for media. I mean, why are we spending so much money on production, on labor, uh, on talent? I mean, if you can't get somebody to volunteer for talent, I think we got a problem. Uh, you know, I think we all have to give in. It's the same question that was asked by my colleague on Twitter. You're spending millions of dollars on all this, I just don't understand why are we spend so much on production and labor. The, the, you have to look at this in terms of the total budget of this campaign that all the activities support. Because the paid media part of this campaign at $133 million is one piece of it, but it's not the whole piece. There's the Census in Schools program. Uh, and there is labor connected with that and production connected with that. There is all of the partnership uh, materials that have been produced. Okay, well, let's, let's go back on talent. How much money did you pay for talent? Um, I, I do not have a, a well, total. Give me a $5 million, $10 million, $20 million talent, and I assume you probably got an actor or somebody to pay that. Uh, pay, how much did we pay for talent I, or, or dubbing? I, dubbing I would, means you reproduce, right? You get a copy and re, uh, reproduce that. How much did you spend for talent, dubbing, and chipping? I, I would have to get back to you on, the, on exactly what those figures are for you each one. You got all these folks behind you. I'm sure somebody knows how much money you spend on talent, dubbing, and chipping. What I'm trying to say is, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Groves, as I mentioned last time we met uh, with the chairman, why can't we use some of that money and put it on the Local buys. I think I've mentioned, uh, you know, I got about four out of the top 50 counties that are hard to count. Why, why can't we use some of that and spend it on some of the advertising to reach the hard to count uh, areas? I mean, why reduce the black purchases? Why reduce the Hispanic purchases? Uh, and I'm sure if I go down on the other ones, we probably have uh, 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 reductions. But why increase production, which includes talent and dubbing? Well, every time, your, your, your question's a fair question, every time a commercial runs, um, there is a talent usage fee in connection to that commercial. Uh, and so therefore, that's one of the reasons why. What percentage is it? In other words, when I do a campaign and it, I run something that's usually 15%, unless if you work out a better deal, it's gonna be less than 15, and we, and, and, and we can do that, did we negotiate this to get a better deal instead of paying millions of dollars on copying and talent? It, it, it all depends on the commercial. It depends on the number of 
on-camera talents who are in the commercial. Okay, give me some of your talent that you spend $36 million on, you know, part of that. Well, a any, any of the commercials, for example, there's a commercial for diverse mass that uh, ran on the Olympics called Frank. Uh, that has, an, has a, a number of different on-camera talents in that commercial. There's a commercial that um, uh, m my colleague at Global Hue has called Silent Chant, which is about to begin running, uh, that also has multiple on-camera on talents in that commercial. And people, you know, get a fee to perform, uh, and that's all unionized. So, so they get a fee, uh, and I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, that I, my time's over, but if you can give me a courtesy, just to finish my thought. So you're saying that you pay somebody a talent fee, and that every time they run, they get a royalty, if I can use that term? Yes. Wow. That's, okay. That is the way the union is, is set up, and that is the way. Uh, Couldn't you use some excuse my language, ordinary folks to, you know, folks to do some of the commercials that can reach out to them. And I see some shaking of hands. For example, local buys, if you go and talk to somebody in South Texas, they probably trust somebody who's been on their TV channel for 10 or 15 years that have some buy, some, somebody that you're paying a, a, a fee and a commercial on that. And again, I know my time's over, but my thing is this, Mr. Chairman, I want to maximize the dollars here. And, and if we can squeeze that, it might be too late already, but I mean, I was hoping we would spend a little bit more money and we've talked about this and, and I'll, what, what is the reserve management left over, Mr. Uh, Dr. Gross? Uh, the, the, the shavings of the amounts that you went through uh, group by group assembled about seven and a half, eight million dollars. So it's still, that hasn't been reduced, so it's still about seven yeah, and a half million. Yeah, right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Gore. Thank you, Ms. Cuellar. And I'll now recognize the gentlewoman from uh, Texas who has also joined us. Welcome to the subcommittee. Mr. Chairman, let me thank you for your courtesies. For you to have this hearing uh, at this uh, hour connotes uh, equals uh, affirms uh, the crucialness of uh, where we are and the posture that we find ourselves in. Uh, my name tag is not here, so uh, he's indicated that I am from Texas and uh, also from Harris County. Uh, let me have the backdrop of my colleague, Congressman Cuellar, in terms of his inquiry of the cost, but let me lay this, uh, uh, offer this on the record. Uh, my district with lives in Harris County um, is a county, Harris County, ranked fourth of the 50 U.S. counties with the highest number of people living in hard-to-count areas. In fact, 80.5 percent of the population in Harris County live in hard-to-count areas. Even more astonishing, Harris County, Texas, is one of eight counties estimated uh, to lose over $100 million each in federal funds from undercounting in the 2000 census. Um, the undercount of 2000 uh, caused uh, Harris County, Texas to lose a total, including state funds, of $234 million. Um, now, we juxtapose that against, of course, uh, the uh, labor costs and production costs on taxpayers' dollars for trying to count people, and I'm not sure what the impact would have. In addition, as it may have occurred in a number of other uh, communities, at the early point of uh, the census coming out, there was a big uproar over the utilization of the word Negro. Um, a simple courtesy, which I may have missed to members of Congress that this was going to occur since we had not seen the early document, might have been helpful. But I had to encounter uh, rallies and, and town hall meetings on the insult of the word Negro. Uh, I've obviously come to um, believe that the count is of crucial importance. And we work with our county and work with individuals in the county uh, and work with those who might have been offended from the African-American community uh, to try to overcome uh, the utilization of that word, which I, I have uh, reason to believe there are many um, very competent reasons for that word. I lay all that uh, forward to raise these questions, and I'll try to be as quick as I can. Uh, Dr. Groves, if you well know, um, I had a conversation with you, and I'd like to invite you, as you've gone to the Valley, 
to come to Houston as soon as possible, and I'd like that to be within the very 10 days or so, and I'd like to look at your schedule. And I say that because you're talking about a city that has the potential of a great loss, but also has the potential to count down or count up to the third largest city in the nation. That's a big vote for America. Uh, and I would venture to say that this may be the poster child for disorganization. Not lack of goodwill people, but disorganization. Uh, you have um, a circumstance where people have been enrolled uh, and allegedly signed up and no word coming back on any uh, status that they have. Secondarily, you have the representation by those who are there saying, we cannot get uh, individuals from the minority community how can you help us? And then not seeking the help. Uh, not going into the mass numbers of churches who will open their doors and they could actually put their uh, sites of uh, sign up right in the uh, uh, place of the doors there in the uh, physical plan of the church building or a, another building that's a 501c3. Many of these buildings, churches have community centers and others that are 501c3. So that's the first thing. Let me go directly to this question. Uh, let me try to find out, um, Dr. Rose, you're newly appointed, and let me congratulate you. But um, let me try to find out, uh, when were these contracts let for um, draft CBC, draft, draft FCB, and Global Hue? When, when were these uh, contracts rendered? Uh, yes, the, the contracts were uh, awarded in September of 2007. So they were awarded under the last administration. That's, That's correct. Un unfortunate. Okay. Uh, and then the Global Hue is what? Is that a subcontractor? Global Hue is a subcontractor to draft FCA. Is that the only subcontractor? No, there are um, other subcontractors who are part of the contract. Um, the IW group. Uh, Global Hue Latino, DXposito and Partners, to name a few. Most of them are uh, multicultural agencies specializing in... And how were they chosen? Uh, they were chosen uh, by Draft FCB uh, prior to award uh, and reviewed by the census in making that award. Would the chairman indulge me just for my, my red light went on? I'm just trying to follow a line of questions. Sure, please. you can finish up, uh, uh, Ms. Jackson. So, so let me first of all make the official request. Mr. Dr. Rose, can I have a confirmation that you work with your schedule? I would be happy to be with you in Houston uh, as soon as I can. All right. Thank you. And I know that we'll work with through that. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Tarjan, is it? Tarkajan. Uh, let me get, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, Tarkajan, excuse me. Let me get a whole list. Let me make the request for the whole list of subcontractors that you have. And I understand that was through the private sector. So you were selected and then you selected Global Hue? We actually what happened is we selected a team uh, that we went through the pitch process with uh, with all the various stages. So you of went the pitch. into the, and then you got selected. Then were Correct. there others that came on board after the fact? Um, the, there, there was a core group of subcontractors who have been with us from the very beginning. Right, that's uh, the team, and then what and happens? And then there are, then there are other subcontractors who, for example, when I, when I uh, talked about Penn Good uh, a little while ago as the media buyer, uh, there were other uh, awards of subcontractors that were made along the way uh, mm -hmm. for various purposes. Well, maybe there will be a second round. Let me, ask, let me just ask for the full complement of contractors, subcontractors, and subcontractors, uh, and by region, please. I assume their address will tell me by region. Uh, then let me also put on the record that you all are very hard to reach, uh, and no response comes back. I, I'm not going to say that I tried to reach out to Global Hue, Mr. Garcia, uh, Ms. Ennis, because I think I got frustrated early on. But the selection process that you use for minority buys is unacceptable. And I understand that the first amount of money was $2.5 million. Is that correct? Was that for the, I'm sorry, for the black print media, $2.5 million? Or was it for total of media, uh, Hispanic and African American? Ms. Ennis? Are you asking what the total budget is now? No. Currently? What was it before? It was $1.7 million. So it was 1.7. What is it now? And it's $2.5 million Okay. Now. So yes. that's unacceptable as well. But let me just... Uh, Representative, we will yeah. have a second, second round. round. So I'll, let me just, I'll allow you to do that. All right, and I will, finish, round, I will finish on this. Um, I want to put on the record the Houston Sun.
that was a missing element uh, when all the other papers came out, and then I will yield back, Mr. Chairman. And Thank you so much, and you will get a second round. Um, let, me, let me say that um, I'm, I'm very concerned about reports that I've received from local elected officials uh, who, who have, have conveyed to me uh, that they are not hearing the confidentiality message uh, in, the, in the, the, the paid media campaign. In other words, um, certain constituent groups are concerned about information that they give uh, to the census on these forms, on the questionnaire. Um, in terms of special outreach uh, to these, these groups, uh, um, I see that census advertising has failed to adequately address these concerns about confidentiality among hard to count groups. Uh, will you take steps to correct this problem? Uh, and, and could supplemental media be created to specifically close this confidentiality gap? And I'll let anyone try to answer that. Um, probably best answered by a number of us because it varies by audience, uh, quite honestly. Um, simple answer to your question, though, is that there are different creative messaging executions that we have that to varying degrees have the confidentiality message in it. And it, it varies by audience where, for example, we found that among the Hispanic audience, it's, it's a very important issue, uh, a less important issue across the diverse mass audience. Uh, and the messaging that we have reflects that difference uh, depending upon the specific audience. Well, but, but, but that may be where you might not have all of the information you need about those audiences because I'm, I'm hearing it in my district and I'm hearing it from a predominantly African-American audience over uh, um, maybe legal concerns, maybe the number of people who live in a certain house that, that's contrary to uh, codes, to building codes and, 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 and occupation codes. I, I mean, so uh, as these things crop up, hopefully you will have uh, some type of strategy that, that effectively addresses it. Yes, Dr. Groves. Um, we're, we're tracking through sample surveys daily, multiple methods of uh, tracking the, the knowledge of the public about these various components. So confidentiality is one. Another is, uh, do people know that this is a 10-minute questionnaire? Sorry. Um, and do they know, do they link the census to the return of taxpayer money, the $400 billion a year? We're tracking this by subgroup. And when we're seeing uh, groups reacting to uh, a particular message uh, inadequately, then there's a chance to intervene. So let me give you an example of this. To our surprise, to my surprise anyway, the message that's getting out least well right now is that this is a short questionnaire and it only takes 10 minutes. And, and we have to do something about that because that's a very good story. So we're trying to measure it and then react to it as much as we can. As, as far as tracking, how will the Census Bureau know uh, if the integrated communications campaign increased the mail response rate? And to what extent will the Bureau calculate the return on its investment in advertising? I love this question because uh, in, in my ideal world, we wouldn't advertise because everyone would know the Census is coming. And so it was a question on my mind when I entered this uh, position. There is, for the first time, an experiment, that, uh, uh, an examination of this built into the census advertising where there are a set of media markets where the advertising levels are going to be uh, systematically varied and will study the impact of that variability. So I think for the first time at the end of this, 
we'll have better data on, for every dollar we spend on advertising, what was the impact on change between 2000 and 2010. Hmm. Okay. Um, um, how will the Bureau use the real-time information it is collecting, uh, such as Gallup data and early mail response data, to respond to challenges? Uh, such as unexpected, unexpected regional disparities in male response rates and what are the targeted response rates that trigger new advertising spending in geographic areas? Um, this, this is something that I hope uh, everyone watches. So starting about the third week of March, the, the proportion of houses that are returning the questionnaire will be published daily at a track level. You'll be able to go to our website, type in your zip code and see how your zip code is doing, uh, how tracks in your zip code are doing. If you want to compare St. Louis to Kansas City on the return rate, you'll be able to do this. We hope that local officials and our partners throughout the country are watching this in addition to us. And uh, we are, proposing to uh, intervene both with the money we've held back on advertising for those areas that are doing less well than we anticipated despite everything we did. We're studying this process. We have a team of people trying to predict what's going to happen and we're forecasting it and we'll do interventions both on paid media and then also we'll get the word out to our partners to help us in this area. This neighborhood isn't doing as well as we want. Right? This is this is going to be a first time for this. It'll be very interesting. I, I'm very hopeful about it. Uh, I'm, I'm very curious about it, so thank you for that response. Mr. Chaffetz, you're recognized. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, and I want to follow up, Director Groves, on, on something you talked about. One of the concerns that you just mentioned in your testimony was the idea that we're, going to, we're requiring the short form as opposed to the long form. I think one of the reasons that we have those, that that, that concern is uh, so rampant in the marketplace is that these American community surveys are being sent out, which are very comprehensive. Um, don't you think this adds to the confusion? I mean, I, at the same time we're running Super Bowl ads and, and, and uh, doing those types of things, people are getting these in the mail. Why? And then you expect somebody, you know, the following month or two to go back and fill out another form why, why are we doing this at the same time? The American Community Survey was um, <clears throat> passed by Congress as a way to separate the long form from the short form. So in essence, the content of that questionnaire you just held up is quite similar to the original long form. Every well, and on, the en and, and on the envelope, it says every U.S. Question Census that Bureau. questionnaire is specified by some law passed by Congress that there must be information on that item in order to implement a program that Congress has passed. So that's the reason for that questionnaire. The, um, the confusion you speak to is something I, I worry about. I'm, I'm, uh, I was concerned about that when I entered office. I. Uh, we have alerted the folks who are falling in the sample of the American Community Survey about the fact that this is not the decennial census and they will get another census form. We're watching right now the response rates on the American Community Survey to see if there is confusion among, if, if they're are, 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 are time short? I, I, I think naturally, given that these forms are, are, are arriving so similar in their time, it is terribly confusing. I had a town hall meeting just in the last two weeks. A person came up, handed this, didn't understand. And again, for another discussion, I think it's a very invasive questionnaire. I mean, one of the questions on the questionnaire is literally, does this person have difficulty dressing or bathing? And I, I, I got to tell you, I, again, for separate hearing, Mr. Chairman, but I think we need to go back and better understand the need of this. It's 11 pages for the first person just to get through. It says it's coming from the Census Bureau. At the same time, we're trying to get people to fill out the other forms. And the other thing is we, we talk about groups that are difficult to get to. One of the questions uh, right here at the beginning, after you kind of get past your pages of housing, is uh, literally the third cur uh, question asks them if they're a citizen. And so we have people that are afraid of filling out these forms because 
you're going to be asked detailed questions. Is this person a citizen of the United States? Um, I, I think this is terribly confusing in terms of its timing and whatnot, and we'll have to continue to go back. I don't understand what constitutional role this plays or the authority that it meets, but I understand that there, is, there are laws in the books, and we'll have to address those. Um, my understanding is that the Bureau has overspent its $356 million address canvassing budget by $88 million, roughly a 25% cost overrun. What is your best projection today as to where you're going to be in terms of your overall budget, given everything else that's going on? Uh, I, I testified on that overrun twice in front of this committee, as you may recall, Congressman. Just, just hoping for an update, just a quick uh, sentence I, or two. I am optimistic based on the re-budgeting of the operations going forward that we've just completed and uh, that uh, we have sufficient money for, for the, uh, the 2010 census, all the further operations. The, Every uh, operation we've done since that event has been on time and either on budget or under budget. The uh, Washington Post, the GA, it was cited in the Washington Post, the GA, GAO warned that in a Senate subcommittee here uh, recently that the Bureau's computer software that handles personnel and payroll systems, as well as processes the proper uh, paper questionnaires, quote, has not yet demonstrated an ability to function at the necessary capacity later this year. Can you give us the most recent update on that? Uh, that, that is a true statement. When I testified in front of this committee last time, I noted that this was the highest risk software development that we were involved in. Uh, it continues to be a high risk uh, uh, development. We have, uh, I've brought in a team of, uh, that's an inter external and uh, independent assessment group, and we are literally meeting daily on this issue right now. The when you say software, risk, can you give us some, you yeah. say high risk, is, I mean, how worried should we be about this? If I could finish, I could uh, uh, address your concerns, I think. The software is being released in, in three components. The first component is released and is in production. The production performance of it is less than desirable but adequate for the operations. We're ramping up operations. So right now we're, we're having low level of operations. It's fitting production needs now. The second release just occurred last Friday. It will start production, well, it started production over the last few days. The big production component will be released at the end of March for the non-response follow-up stage. That's what we're really focusing on. We have a team together that is making the kind of trade-off decisions you need to make in a, in a large software development with a fixed deadline, and that is some of the functions that were desired for computer assistance will be will have workarounds that will be manual in nature. When I do my visits around the country to our regional offices, uh, it gives me some comfort that they're ready to do those in a manual mode because all past censuses do, did those manually. That was a step up and we'll, okay. we'll pull off those things. So we're focusing on the identification of the core functions that allow us to do a successful census. That's where we are right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chaffin. And now we will recognize uh, Ms. Waters. Yeah, for second Thank round. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to do this second round. I need to understand the uh, organization of um, the media um, companies that are involved in this campaign. Uh, now, you are, uh, you are draft FCB, is that right? That, that's correct. Okay, and you are the media <coughs> company that's coordinating all of the media buys and uh, production, et cetera. We, we, we cohort, we are the prime contractor uh, meaning that we have uh, a, some specific responsibilities that are ours, which are overall coordination of the campaign elements. And then we have uh, a, a whole host of subcontractors who work for us who bring certain expertise to the table, such as um, expertise on the black audience or expertise in the Hispanic audience. Uh, Oh, that's okay. You don't have to tell me what they do. I just want the structure. You're the prime contractor. Yes. How many subcontractors do you have? There are, in, ad in addition to us, there are, I believe it's um, 
Uh, 12 additional subcontractors. 12 additional subcontractors and now? Yes. Who are were part these of the subcontractors hired through an RFP process? These subcontractors were hired originally as part of our team process for pitching the census. So Just tell me, were they RFP or were they just selected or appointed or however? Well, we went through an RFP process with so the census. So you selected these 12 additional contractors through an RFP process. Is that correct? The RFP process that we went through was with the census to get the contract. If that's what you mean by an no, RFP process. No, let me tell you what I mean. You hired 12 additional contractors, is that right? We, we brought, we have a team of subcontractors who have worked with us from the beginning. Uh, and they were all part of the original contract and RFP process that we went through with the Census Bureau. You have 12 contractors. Correct. How were they hired? How did you get these 12 contractors? You said some were with you from the beginning. I don't know what that means. Okay. It, 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 there, there are two processes that, that were at work here. We selected partners to work with us. To subcontractors I, I, that I did not go through an RFP con uh, process. There, there, there were no subcontractors that we selected that were not part of an RFP process. Okay, so in the beginning, you selected contractors. That's what you said. That's correct. And we How all did you select them? What and, process And we all together went through a, a RFP process to be awarded this contract. So the 12, so the, the, in the beginning, the contractors that you selected went through an RFP process. That's correct. So they, why couldn't you just say that? RFP uh, process, okay? Because I'm, I'm trying to make the distinction between How many were selected through the RFP process in what you call the beginning? They were, they were all part of the RFP process that we went through all along 12. with our subcontractors. Yes, along with all our 12. subcontractors. Are these independent contractors? Uh, or are these contractors subcontractors to you or the company that you subcontract no, to? No, they are subcontractors to us. To you. So Correct. these are not independent contractors. These are people who work for you. Yes. So you did an RFP process for people who work for you. We did an R we We were along with all of those subcontractors that I'm just talking about, part of the RFP process that we went through with the Census Bureau in selecting us and also selecting those subcontractors. So basically, your company controls all the subcontractors because they worked for you anyway. Well, there are, there are now subcontracts that um, our subcontractors have for media buying and other activities. Okay, we'll that, get to that. that, that are but let's make sure we understand that in the beginning, as you refer to it, Correct. you selected 12 contractors, all of whom were subcontractors to you already. Well, they weren't already subcontractors. Well, however they got to be. To us. Uh, but they, they all subcontract. They're your people, subcontractors. Well, when, when you say that they are our people, they well, are not. Well, you said in the beginning, they are, not, they are not necessarily part of our company. Some of them are, some of them are not. I don't care how they are hired by you. The question becomes, are these subcontractors a part of your company? Whether they're part-time, full-time, hired in the beginning or later on, these are your subcontractors in your company, right? Glo Glo Global Hue is not part of our company. Allied Media, who is a subcontractor, How is many not part are of part our of your company? Twelve, right? No. How many uh, of the twelve? Let me, let me, I will tell you who is part of our company. Just tell me how many of the twelve. Weber Shandwick is one. Uh, you don't have to name them. I just want to know how many. Well, I'm, I'm trying to go through in my head how many are part of our company and how many are okay, not. Okay, don't I believe take so long. Her, we only have so many minutes. How many? Can you guess it? Somebody tell him. I believe there are two, Weber Shanwick and Jack Morton. I'm sorry, three. I, the IW group is also part of our interpublic group of companies. So three of the 12 are your own subcontractors 
that were hired through some RFP uh, process? They are, they are owned by the same holding company as we are. Oh, well, what's the holding company? Interpublic group of companies. So you are owned by whom? A company called the Interpublic Group of Companies. Interpublic Group of Companies. So they own you and the subcontractors? They own us and the three subcontractors that I mentioned. They do not own the other three subcontractors. Three of the 12, is that right? Excuse me? Three of the 12 I, are I believe owned? it's three of the 12, yes. Okay, now tell me about Global Hue. You have Global Hue Black and Global Hue Latino or something like that. That's is that correct. one company or is that two companies? Glo global Hue uh, African American and Global Hue uh, Latino is one company with two separate operations. Uh, one targeted to the black audience and the Who other targeted owned, to... I don't have to tell me all that. Who owns Global Hue? Don Coleman. So he owns... Global Hue and Global Hue Latino. And Global, but he's not owned by? He's not owned by Inner Republic, no. Okay. Um, all of, did he have to go through an RFP process or was he appointed or selected to do the media buys for the black and Latino audiences? Did he go through an RFP he process? He went through the RFP process with Draft FCB. With whom? Draft FCB. So you selected all of the other nine through an RFP process? Is that what you did? We, we, we selected all of the other subcontractors to be part of our team. Together, we went through this RFP process with the Census Bureau to be awarded the contract in 2007. Thank you. I'm not interested in how many people were involved in the RFP process. I just wanted to know, was there an RFP process? I'm trying to understand who owns what and how they were selected? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help you understand it. Well, okay, if you would just answer the question and not editorialize, I would, you would help me out, okay? okay? So I think we're at this point. Now, can you tell me how much each, the, the first three that are owned by your company, how much are they contracted for? How, how much, what is the value of each of those contracts? Well, first of all, uh, I, don't, I don't have that information in, uh, at my fingertips in terms of how well, much. Well, how much is your contract? What is the value of your contract? The, the total value of the contract uh, is. Of your, just yours. Well, the total value of the contract is $340 million. So $340 million. Who gets paid out of that $340 million? All of the subcontractors ourselves, all of the media that's purchased, all of the production uh, that's done, uh, literally every activity. So uh, you have $340 million contract. Three of the subcontractors are your, your people that are work in the company that you work for. Correct. You don't know how much they are paid, each of them. You don't well, know I, what those I, I contracts do. are I, worth. I, I do. I don't have that information at my fingertips. Do you know how much me. the other nine contracts are worth? Again, I, I can. They, they were. They are not contracts where somebody was awarded a specific amount to do the work. The being, it's an open-ended contract. It, it's there. It, it is a contract where we have come together to work on the three hundred and forty million dollar contract and mutually, collaboratively, come up with. Uh, how Sir, we're going to I divide only want to know what you pay these people. I don't care how collaborative you are. I want to know how much does each one of them make. Are you telling me it's an open-ended contract? You don't have a, a, an exact number that you contracted for? Is that what you're telling no, me? No, I can provide that information for you. I don't have it at my fingertips. Mr. Right Chairman, now. I would like to request that that information be provided. As a matter of fact, if you're going to have any more hearings, um, I'd like to see a flow chart of um, how these companies are connected, how much money they are contracted for, and um, whether or not there was an RFP process in this collaborative effort uh, that is being described to us. Thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. I thank the uh, gentlewoman from uh, California. Uh, for the record, uh, sir, uh, 10 days from now, uh, submit to the committee. 
the information that Ms. Waters requested. Excuse me, uh, if I can, thank you. Um, there was one part of the question that was not answered. Uh, while the gentleman may not know how much the other subcontracts are worth, I asked him how much was his worth, and that was not answered. He gave me the big answer of $340 million. So let me, if I may, if you may. Yeah, why don't we do this? Uh, Ms. Waters, uh, uh, sir, again, uh, for the record, uh, submit to the committee in, in writing within 10 days from today. Uh, the information that she requested, especially specifically on the $340 million contract, if you can break that down as to what your company and the subcontractors uh, will he be getting. He doesn't know how much he makes now? It, well, apparently he doesn't, right? Is that correct? You don't know how much your contract is worth? Our, our contract is worth $340 million. S that is the value of the contract that S we but have. But you told me everybody gets paid out of that contract. That's correct. How much do you get paid out of the $340 million for your company? Uh, again, I would have to go and okay. collect that information. Okay. But why don't we go ahead and, and provide that information to the committee within uh, 10 working days from today, uh, sir? We'll do. Then also the uh, information that I requested uh, on the production, labor, the br uh, breakdown on the talent, the dubbing, the shipping, and all that, if I can have the breakdown again, uh, to be submitted to the committee within 10 working days. At this time, uh, I'll recognize the gentlewoman from uh, Texas, uh, Ms. Jackson Lee, if you have any further questions. Recognize for five minutes. Thank you very much. Dr. Gross, I want to pointedly speak to you because you represent the administration and really say to you that we do want to be your partner. Uh, we know that this is a collective challenge and responsibility in this instance for at least two branches of government, the executive and the Congress. So I want to, uh, first of all, thank the chairman for this hearing and just hope that you will leave here knowing that we are in fact partners. As I ask my questions, um, and uh, I'm asking them because I am on the ground in our respective districts and I see either the confusion that I've acknowledged and or the angst and uh, anguish. Uh, for example, um, you've indicated, and you might want to answer this, you said if you had been in place, you would not have used, uh, I guess, print media or advertising, and, I, and I'd be interested in that, and I, I want to go quickly, so I want to hear that question, but I also want to say to you is that culturally speaking, um, and I don't pretend to be the expert, but living amongst very diverse cultures, there are some uh, print newspapers, for example, that are in essence the Bible in certain communities, whether it's Asian, whether it's in their own uh, language, many language directed newspapers, whether it's Latino, Latino whether it's immigrant, um, vast immigrant, uh, whether it is subsets of the African American population, that means African, Haitian, and others, uh, these newspapers are valuable. And so when I made the comment about I was not being short of uh, the Arab American community, I was not being um, light. Uh, in my assessment of $1.7 million and then moving it to $2.5 million as if I was going to tumble over and, and feel so overwhelmed by the increase. And let me tell you what my concern is. You know, you wonder, um, I enjoy the Super Bowl. I went to about four or five uh, Super Bowl parties and I uh, enjoy the diversity of the folk that I saw. And unfortunately, uh, I might have been like a lot of Americans. Maybe some people were sitting down, but I can tell you this. In the homes that I went in, people were so busy slapping five and having a good time, I'm not sure what advertisement they might have seen. Um, and uh, so even though you might have had a great audience, I can't take a poll. I'm sure there was a judgment made on that point, but I'm not sure whether anybody came away and said, you know what, besides the saints going marching in, do you know that the census is here? Dr. Groves, I'm not sure that occurred, but I will tell you, that newspaper ads and, and uh, electronic media in Pacific audiences, minority radio, uh, make a difference on drive time, somebody picking up a newspaper at a church or at a store, they take those papers home. They open them, they may not be reading everything, but if they get a front page slot, they, or they see an ad, they, they will move forward on that because it's a piece of paper that they're holding on to. Let, let me just hear you very quickly. What did you say about print? Advertising. I, I wasn't sure whether you were saying you were for it or you would have done something different. Uh, what, what I tried to convey, first of all, I'm not an advertiser. And I understand. I, I, this is just your preference. Uh, we, I, we've I've already gone over I've the hurdle. I've learned a lot over the past few months. Uh, but <clears throat> what was done, I'm sure, because I've, I've, I've seen the approach, was to examine for the hard-to-count groups their media consumption by type of medium. Right. 
that led to the targeting. And so if you go across these different hard to count groups, uh, the role of radio in the community varies across the groups. Right. The role of print varies and so on. So that guided the national buys. In the last few months, I've been traveling all over the place. I've talked to local folks. I was in Minneapolis last, uh, just a few uh -huh. days ago with local newspapers right. talking about exactly what you're talking about, but this was the Somali community. Right, in I know them well. Uh -huh. I, I, I get this point, uh, and when I go back and look at the national plan, I, I see the, the difficulty we have communicating the fact that uh, we have to have certain thresholds uh, we have to uh, go off of audience figures for the outlets that we're using. That's the, the objective. So you're, you're buying into it now. You would have had a different approach, but you understand what we're saying. I understand, yeah. and we tried, uh, when I asked how, how we did this, we tried to get input from our regional offices, and they did indeed enrich the media outlet list that yeah. was part of the RFP. Let me, because my time is going, Sorry. Then, then let me get on record with you, Director Groves. 2.5 million is not enough for print media. I haven't gotten the electronic media, and I'm going to go a series of questions. I want to leave you now uh, because y you have indicated that you will reach out to me on the organization and the enrollment and no response and a lot of other issues that we need to, to talk about on the, on the record. I, I want to get that on the record, acknowledging how important these people are. Can I just make these questions. Mr. Mr. Uh, Turkasian, I on the record, Mr. Chairman, I need to get, as I indicated, the list of all the contractors, and I, the Congressman Waters may have asked that, but to Mr. Garcia and Mr. Ennis, uh, excuse me, Ms. Ennis, I need all of the, uh, you're doing radio and print, are you producing ads as well? Our Global Hue and Global Hue Latino are producing ads. All right, as well. so you're getting uh, persons to act in, uh, you're doing television? TV, radio. Okay, what's the buy for television? I'm not sure what your question is. is uh, how is much there are you buy? spending on, on TV and under, for, that's directed to the minority community? Local TV or national or both? Uh, both. Okay. Can I take one second to... Okay, then let me... Mr. Garcia is answering the same thing. This is combined. The second thing is uh, I need from you the list of all print that you're utilizing. Um, and I, I let me be on the record that I have no ownership in the Houston Sun. I'm using it as an example, and I'm not precluding anyone else. I'd like to get a, a list of all of the newspapers. And the only reason I use them as an example is my understanding is that they were part of the... Uh, conversation and dialogue by several groups um, and there may be others in Atlanta or others somewhere else and they were left out. Houston Sun is on our is on our media buy. Okay, we, I, we don't have that information but if you would give me the whole list yep. and that is all the papers and then if you have a, a uh, immigrant population yes, paper list we I do. appreciate it. I'm going to finish. Yeah, I'd be second. happy to yield. Uh, while you're making that request would you also request um, I guess what would be termed as the coverage that that particular newspaper has, because as I've been looking at some of this information, it seems so uh, disproportionate. There are some newspapers that are magazines that they give extraordinary amounts to, and ones who have more coverage get less amount. And I want to see how they make these decisions. So if you would include that in your request, I would appreciate it. I think the gentlelady is correct. The analysis of how you made the decisions uh, and how you make decisions as to um, the amount of advertising in the particular medium, magazines versus uh, others. Uh, I hear the gavel and I, I'm just, was this been submitted in the record? This is the American survey. I'd like to submit this in the record and I guess we're not having another round, but Dr. Director Groves, I assume this is your document. This is the American survey. Yeah. Yep. I will say to you that this is posing a lot of confusion and maybe we will get an answer on how we decipher that and get people to know it's 10 minutes and 10 questions. And I know my colleague uh, raised the same point and, and how we separate this out. Why couldn't this be sent 2011 and get this information or, or December 2010 to get this information? So I yield back and I thank the uh, chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, one question before I pass it on to the ranking member. The uh, company Des Desposito, is that one of them also that, that's owned by y'all? Uh, yes, Desposito is a company that is one of our core subcontractors, but we hired them after. Is that part of the three or is that number four? 
No, they are not owned by uh, the Interpublic Group. Oh, okay. They're an independent company. Okay, okay. Um, and, and I want to correct myself on something. I, in Homeland, I usually give 10 days, but I understand this committee, it's five days. Uh, so I will correct myself and, uh, and ask that the information be submitted uh, five days, uh, five working days from today. At this time, I'll recognize the ranking, uh, ranking member. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, before I was talking about the M American Community Survey and some of the concerns about the timing and the questions and whatnot, let me, uh, let me also say publicly that the Republican National Committee, I'm a Republican, sent out a so-called census uh, across the country. Uh, I, th I think that was wrong. I don't think we necessarily mandate or, or uh, put in statute that you shouldn't use the word census. But I think it was deceiving at best, and I wish my party had not done that. I would encourage others to not try to piggyback and take advantage of the word census at a time that we're trying to encourage participation. And I thought it was used as an enticement to open an envelope, and I wish they hadn't have done it. And, uh, but I, I want to be fair on both sides and stand on principle. So I, I just I, I want to say that. Uh, I was... Uh, uh, I've been somewhat frustrated, uh, Director Groves, as you know, about the question of hiring criminals to conduct the enumeration parts of the census. What I'd, I'd like to ask again, how many criminals are we hiring to do the enumeration? And what crimes do you think are acceptable to be hired to, do, to become an enumerator? I could, uh, I brief the chairman and the ranking member McHenry on the changes in the uh, both the fingerprinting and the adjudication process and I think we're clo we were close to having a meeting but the snowfall did us in uh, of all the members I'd be happy to do that again uh, if you would like I could read through all of the crime types that uh, throw out an applicant immediately from consideration. I, I guess uh, for the benefit of the full committee, I would like your commitment and understand the timing of when you're going to when you're going to provide that information. I think those are two critical pieces of information. I think Congress is entitled to see I'm that happy information. Happy to do it right now if you'd like, Congressman. And, and and in the essence of time, I want to be careful with my colleagues. If you can submit it right now, that'd be great. I will look at it and read through it tomorrow. Um, I, I understand there's going to be a lengthy list of maybe what's not acceptable, but I also want to see what's acceptable. And I'd like to know how many people we are hiring that fall into this category. So again, if I have your commitment that you're going to, you have this information, that you will provide it, we'll try this again. Um, the hour is late, you know, we're coming up on 9 o'clock here. Uh, do I have your assurance that you're, we're going to provide that information? Sure. Okay. I, I appreciate it. Because I, my time is real short. One last thing that I would appreciate your explanation on is what is this category called census in schools. How much are we spending there? And what does that really do? I mean, if you're, if you're a 12-year-old kid, you're not going to be able to follow, fill out the census. And I guess you want to encourage mom to do it. But what is this program and why are we spending so much? And how much are we spending on it? And why are we spending so much on it? We're spending about $13 million on it. Okay. And let me tell you the program to answer your question. This is a program that uh, uh, has exercises for K through 12 kids, uh, year appropriate. <clears throat> the focus of the exercise is to uh, teach the constitutional bases of the census in those uh, grades that can consume that. In grades that are lower, it uh, it talks about what a census is, the fact that this country since 1790 has, has done this and they do exercises of counting, map reading. There's a bit of civics, a bit of arithmetic, a bit of geography that's done. What we've found, I think, and what other countries have found repeatedly is that for new immigrant families, the children are the first to learn the language of the new country. And uh, to the extent they understand the message and they look forward to participating in their census, their first census for many of them, that aids the participation rate of others. I've gone to several schools around the country. Uh, we have en enlisted the help of uh, Sesame Street characters to help get this message out. So the Count and Rosita sometimes come with me. 
the kids get it. Uh, Maybe next time you could bring I, them along. That I, would be I, great. I have, I have quiz kids about things that my adult friends don't know. The lessons are working. They know why we do a census. They know, that, uh, some of them know that Thomas Jefferson was the first director of the census. Uh, they get it. So I, I'm, I think this is an area that we should all be proud, uh, that we're teaching these young Americans about how this country works and how the census fits into it. And it sounds like an admirable goal. I, I, you know, I questioned 13 million and how did it work? And obviously I think, Mr. Chairman, it's 13. 13. 13. 13 million. Who's got that contract? <laughs> yeah, who does have that contract? How is that, how is that money passed this out? This is actually done through schools. So with, but an, I mean, a, with some an alliance uh, from scholastic.com, teachers can go to the website and download the materials. This seems to be working. If you could and then we send out maps and other materials directly to the schools. If we could learn the details of how that is administered, how that money gets spread out. I mean, oh, sure. on the one hand, it sounds like a very large number when you think about the tens of millions of kids we have out there and all the schools. I and you know what's fun? To go to a school in your district and watch them do this exercise. This is the best fun. If we ever. could learn more about how that I'd money is administered to. and who has that contract, that's sort of similar to what we were talking about before. We would appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and, and Dr. Groves, again, within five days, if you can submit that information from today. Uh, Dr. Groves, we're, we're about to close. Uh, but let me say, you and I have spoken about the, the question that the ranking member asked. And of course, you all are going to do everything to make sure that the American public is protected. Is that correct? Absolutely. I've, I've testified and I've uh, given speeches that the safety of both the American public and our enumerators are, are key uh, to the success of the census. This has to be both true in fact and true in perception. I care deeply about this. We're doing everything we can to make sure that occurs. Yeah. And Chairman. I know you well, so I appreciate your time. Dr. Gross, uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and one more yeah, short uh, question, and then we're yeah, going to move to the next panel. A record clarification, if I could. And, and Ms. Dr. Grove, you didn't answer my question um, on the American survey, it, the timing. Is that now, or is it later? Uh, since the early 2000s, continuously, we've been doing that survey. Every month, a small okay. sample of households get that, and it just keeps going forever. I see. So we've you might think with your top leadership how we can help people discern the two, particularly in the undercounted area. Mr. Chairman, just a record clarification. Uh, Ms. Ennis, are you going to su submit what I asked you to submit in writing, or do you have a number right here? I asked the question, Mr. Chairman, and she was looking through her papers. D did you? I can give you the numbers right now and in writing if you'd like, oh, if we have time. Mr. Chairman, I don't know if they're, the Chairman yeah. would, how do you want it, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, well, one of, if we can do this quickly, because I, I don't want to move yeah. uh, into okay. the second Okay, if panel. you could just say it quickly I'm and just gonna have read a record clarification. You. Okay, it's six million in national television, 4.2 million in local television, 2.8 million of national radio, 3.9 million in local radio, 1.6 million online, that's digital marketing, 800,000 in magazine, 2.5 million in local newspapers, and 1.2 million in out of home. Great. Well, we're writing that down, and you can put that in writing, and I will, yep. I'll just close on this point so that I will not be reflected negatively in the record. I'm not asking about one newspaper. I use them as an example of individuals who were left out. And uh, Mr. Blackwell is here, and he knows that I'm looking at the vast number of newspapers, not only in Houston, but elsewhere, and I think that that number is not high enough. And lastly, my good friend from Utah, I would like to clarify the word criminals, because I have greatest uh, respect for the census, and I know that it's a different term from criminals. These are individuals who you're not barring, who happen to be ex-felons, or may be ex-felons, or may have had uh, and are uh, through the process and are uh, employable. So I know that they may have had a record to the distinguished gentleman, and I know that you're going to give him a report, uh, Dr. Groves, about what the criteria is, but I wouldn't want to frighten uh, the public about criminals. Um, I believe it is different from that. It is people who are eligible to work who may have had a prior encounter with the law, and you vetted them and, and uh, making sure they're able to work. But I know you'll give us a final report on that. And I yield back to the chairman. Thank you, uh, thank you very much uh, to the uh, witnesses, uh, Dr. Groves, uh, Mr. Tarker-Aki, 
uh, Mr. Garcia and Ms. Dennis, we want to thank you very much. Uh, again, this was a long day. Uh, as you can see, we started out with Toyota and still got one last panel, I, I believe. Uh, two more. Um, All right, uh, so, so again, I want to thank you uh, to all of y'all. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the second panel at this time. Thank you very much. Good night.